Welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. Here today we have nine time Canadian champion, gold medalist, Mark Bufa from Bufa Distribution. Yeah, not nine time champion, but nine time <laughs> member of Team Canada. You know, anyways, whatever. Legend. Yeah, there you go. Anyways, today we're talking about tourney prep. I have the Canadian team trials coming up within the next couple weeks. So, Mark, can you help me out today to prepare for the tournament? Yeah, for sure. So the tournament's coming up here in a couple of weeks. So we're talking short term when, when we're talking about these suggestions. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. One is going to be your, your practice prep. Mm -hmm. And also, we're also going to talk about some of the accessories that you should have in your bag. Gotcha. Hopefully, they're already in your bag. And if not, then we'll, we'll kind of touch on that. And it's going to be great for the viewers as well on what to pack in your accessory bag. So a lot of stuff getting into and getting right for the tournament. Uh, last night you gave us a clinic and learned a lot of cool stuff. Do you mind sharing some of the physical aspects that could help me uh, get into the tourney prep? Right, so again, thinking short term here, we only have a couple of weeks to get ready. This is where you want to make sure that your spare, spare game excuse me, is on point, mm. okay? If there's one place that you want to make some free pins is to make your makeable spares. If you can go to team trials and make 95% of your makeables or your single pins, if anything, I think you have a very strong chance to make the youth team and also make a run for the adult team, okay? Making your multi-pin spares, like your 3-6-10s, your, you know, your 1-2-4 washouts, buckets, that type of stuff, are a little bit more complicated, but if you can increase your spare percentage on those, it's a bonus, okay? What I like to share and what I like to teach people is to do a four four shot rotation to practice your spares. So typically we'll hear people say, oh, I practiced my 10 pin for hours on end. I, press, I personally like to move around the lane a little bit because it simulates more of a real world scenario. So the practice rotation is very simple. Shot number one, you go for the 10 pin or the 610, okay? If you hit the three pin, it doesn't count. Then you move to the seven pin, you hit the, either the four seven or the seven pin clean. If you hit the two pin, doesn't count, you try again. Okay, you don't go back to the start, you try again. Then you do three, six, 10, you're looking to hit the right side of the three pin. And then we go one, two, four, and you're looking to hit the left side of the head pin. So by doing that four shot rotation, you cover a lot of the easy spares from the four corners of the lane. So basically you now have four targeting methods. So where do I stand, where do I look? for four different combinations, and that should cover the entire pocket. So your 3-6-10 line, throwing it straight, should cover your 9-pin, mm -hmm. right? Your 1-2-4 line should cover your 2-pin or your 4-pin. All of this, obviously, if you're left-handed, you know, mirror image, okay? So, sorry lefties, you already have it easy enough, so that's it, okay? Yeah, so that's a really good rotation that I like to teach. I would invite you to, 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 to try it yourself, right? I guess I'll lead into our question of the week. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Let us know down in the comments what your spare rotation is during uh, your practice sessions. Huh? There yeah. you go. Good. If you have, you should have one. If you have one. <laughs> <laughs> so typically also another thing, you're getting ready for a tournament. And this is one thing that my, my father, USBC gold coach, Frank Buffa, always tried to instill in my brain was when you do a practice session, always finish with a three bagger. Okay, mm. so you, you, you've been bowling, you're bowling maybe six games of practice, eight games of practice, hopefully. You get into the end, you just finish doing like, let's say, maybe 20 shots of spare practice. What happened to the pattern? It's crazy. It's all over the place, right? Now you gotta do a three bagger when you don't know what's going on with the lane. So now that really puts you into a situation where you now have to step up and actually throw three in the 10th to finish your practice. So that's a nice little cherry on top. So just kind of giving yourself a little bit of a challenge there. I like it. Yeah. That sounds fun. Cool. So I've never been to the team trials before, but here it's a very great tournament. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of strategy that goes into it. So could you maybe uh, share some advice on that? Right. So we're bowling on three different patterns, different lengths from the World Bowling Association Bank of Patterns. So when you're going to be practicing, it is important to try to practice on different lengths of patterns. Mm. So if you can, if the bowling center will allow it, they can put out a fresh pattern. However, it is not necessary. What is good is to make sure that you practice the four zones of the lane. So try to practice playing extreme outside part of the lane. So outside of five, good luck, okay? Practice the track area. So between, let's say eight and 12-ish, okay? Then practice, you know, the middle part of the lane, just a little bit right of, of 20 and then practice the deep inside line okay and this is as much for men 
boys or girls and women, okay? And this is where you will have your strength. So typically in your case, you might not be comfortable playing extremely far out, but same thing for the women, they might not be very comfortable playing very far deep inside. I know it feels uncomfortable, but that's what practice is for, okay? So if you have a chance, especially early on in the season, now with just being a couple of weeks out, maybe not, that's where I would maybe spend a little bit more time on the, on the spare prep and that type of stuff. Leading into a tournament, Try to play those four parts of the lane and get comfortable with it. Will do. So bowling's not just strategy and physical, as you know. There's also the mental game to it. Ugh. But yeah. how can we prepare mentally for the tournament? Right. So first off, it all comes down to your goals, right? So what did you set yourself as a goal going into this event? So I guess I'll throw it on to you. What are you aspiring to get out of this event? I would like to make the youth team. Okay, so first thing is that what you need to do just to get ready for it, that is your goal. Now let's start setting some affirmations behind that, okay? I am a member of 22 Youth Team Canada. Mm -hmm. I am a great spare shooter. I make all my single pins. I'm better than Jungo. <laughs> That's the, the truth. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, stay back there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so these are the types of things that you want to say. Get ready, do some self-talk, okay? You want to, a good tip that I like telling people is talk to yourself like you would talk to someone that you respect. Before you go to an event, it's not, I hope, it's my intent is to do this. And using words of that nature, you know, I intend to make this spare. I intend to, like, just really affirming your actions is going to wire your brain a little bit differently and it's going to be a little bit less stressful because you're getting yourself ready for those types of aspects also another thing since we're bowling on multiple different patterns mm. you're going to a different province in a different time zone you're not sleeping in your own bed there's a lot of unexpected things that might happen yeah. so one thing that you need to get into your brain today is to expect the mm. unexpected Okay, so there might be some things that might happen where you might need to press the panic button. And honestly, that's okay. You need to know that you're not the only one that's going to be put into that situation at that time. You are traveling with Django, you're maybe traveling with some other of your friends, you know, your practice partners. Use them to help you out. And also, we are going into a bowling center that you might not have bowled in before, no. correct? Yeah. Okay. You know, someone like even Ryan Reed here who has bowled at Classic Bowl, mm -hmm. maybe he can tell you a little bit about the characteristics of that bowling center to help you make proper arsenal selection choices and really get you into, okay, this, this bowling center tends to hook a lot or it tends to be pretty slick. Kind of get like a feel for what is to come, yep. but take it with a grain of salt is all I'm trying to say. You know, don't say, hey, Mark said this and it didn't work out. Oh, Mark is trying to screw me over. Like, that's not the idea. It's just kind of do your homework before you go to the event. Do your homework. Okay? Yeah. Got it. Will do. So, Mark, bowling balls, arsenal, what should we do? Yeah, obviously for tournament prep, you need to prep your arsenal before you go. So let's talk bowling balls. Wow. <laughs> you got magic. There you go. Boof a bowling distribution. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we got here is we got a good basic six ball arsenal that we could look for. So if you're looking at home, obviously there's different choices and all that, but we're just looking at basic principles here in, to, in order to build a basic six ball arsenal for a tournament. So first we have on the high end of the spectrum, we have our asymmetrical bowling balls, okay? So what we're looking for is a cover stock with a solid cover stock and also a cover stock with some sort of a pearl. So it could be also a pearl or a hybrid. So typically a pearl will be a more angular ball reaction and a solid will be more of a rounded ball reaction. So we need a flavor of both. We're not getting into layouts for this example because ball selection is key. In essence, we would like at least two asims in an arsenal. Then we fall into the symmetrical options. So same thing here, solid, pearl, symmetrical. So we have a step down from this, we have a step down from there. And then obviously today, in today's day and age, urethane plays a very key part in controlling the pattern. Mm -hmm. So at least one urethane, if you need a spare ball to throw it straighter, I highly suggest throwing all your single pin spares straight. Uh, if that's already not the case, as we had mentioned earlier in the spare rotation, good time to kind of try that. So this is a basic six ball arsenal. Uh, you're probably gonna be traveling with maybe six or eight. And basically like we would kind of like stack it around here. So maybe we would add another urethane piece and maybe for you being a two-hander, we might add another symmetrical piece. 
to kind of fill in those gaps to make an eight ball arsenal. But this is like a basic starting point that I suggest, okay? Another thing is work with your coach or also work with your pro shop operator yeah. to really make sure you have all your bases covered. But again, with that whole idea of expect the unexpected, you want an arsenal to look good on paper and then hopefully it looks good on the lanes, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, definitely. All right, that was cool. What? Um, <laughs> what yeah. happened? Where'd the balls go? I know, these are bowling balls. <laughs> Mark, what are these? Well, this is your accessory bag. Oh. Okay, so one of the things that you really need to make sure is is all said and done is your accessory bag. Okay, mm -hmm. first thing I asked you before we shot this video is do you have an accessory pouch? And you said, I usually have a backpack with me. <laughs> so <laughs> everything goes in there. Okay, so typically today that's what you're going to see is people walking around with backpacks. You know, with the triple totes, it kind of just makes sense. You throw your shoes in there and all your accessories and that's fine. So I guess tell me what, what you've got here and where these kind of fit in your arsenal. Definitely. Right. So starting on this side, these are Aberlon pads used for resurfacing the cover stock. Of, Freshening up the cover stock. Freshening right? up the cover stock of the bowling ball. I like it to manipulate whether the motion's good, but if it's hooking a bit too late or a bit too early, I can either go up or down in surface. Right, okay, so here we've got 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, which is your basic stack, I guess I would like to say. However, what you should do in this case for you going into team trials is maybe have an extra set, okay? So you never know, you're stressed out during the event, maybe you leave one on a table, you lose one, you're out of luck because you lost your 2000 pad and you need it in day three, mm -hmm. right? So now you're scrambling to try to find one, you're asking a friend, maybe you don't have friends, I don't know, but that's it. <laughs> So all I would say is maybe have like a principal kit and also have a fresh kit because these ones do have some use to them. Mm -hmm. Some like the, you can see like there's a little bit of texture here. So I would say maybe keep a spare kit, you know, just have a little bit of a double stack there. So if there's anything I would say to that is, you know, bring extras in that case. Definitely. Okay. Some other stuff, you've got a little rosin bag here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your trusty chamois that need to go in the wash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is triple shams after Jungle. Yeah. I sewed mine together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wiping oil off the ball and the rosin bags for my hands because my two hands sometimes slips off the ball if there's too much oil on it. So it's nice to regrip my hands. Right. So again, same thing like I said with this, you're traveling, you never know what you can lose. So it's nice to have maybe an extra chamois, brand new one in your bag just in case you lose your stack. And also same thing with your grip sack. You never know, maybe the stitching will break and, and you know, like, you, again, as I mentioned earlier, expect the unexpected. So bring some extras there, okay? Yeah. Then we fall into these bad boys, right? What we got here, this is... For your shoes. For your shoes, yeah. okay? As we can see here, you've got some that have been used and some that are just brand spanking new, yeah. okay? What I would suggest to you is at least try to break these in because if ever you need to use this one, which is very highly unlikely, at least you've got some experience with it and you know how it's going to slide. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing too is this is the basic kit that came with the shoes. I would highly suggest you get a full kit. Okay. Mm -hmm. This being a 3G kit, there are also some supplemental options from other manufacturers that will give you other slide options. Mm. Okay. So in this case here, having a very big selection of sliders and heels at the high level is a must. So here we've got a THE 9 sole. Okay. This is relative to the nine shoe, but we do see that here we have a double texture, mm. whereas this is a single texture. Okay. So that's why I was saying like certain manufacturers will have other options. These become a nice option that you, obviously you would just get the straight slide or not with the, 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 the base like this. Just trim it out and at least now you have another option that you currently don't have in your bag. You're going half, well you're going full way across the country to a different climate where there's snow, where there's no snow here. The approaches might be a little bit slicker, a little bit tackier, you do not know. And again, expect the unexpected. So bring a couple of extra sliders, different options that you don't have in the, the basic kit. Definitely. So I would say if you can spend maybe a $100, $150 on getting a nice kit for your shoes, it's something that's gonna last you for years and years after. You know, Even if you do change shoes, if you go to the same brand, they'll still fit. So next up, uh, you're a two-hander, so you might you know, tear up your fingers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. 
So you do have some skin patch here. So we do also have some protective tape that you might not use on a daily basis. I still think it's something nice to have in your bag, just in case. As we mentioned earlier, you're going into a different climate. You don't know what's gonna expect. Maybe you're gonna tear up. I never use thumb protection tape or finger protection tape, but I've always had a pack in my bag just in case. Gotcha. Okay, next up. Ball cleaner. Yeah, so we've got two options there that, that you're taking. Okay. Yep. This is the Bufa solution. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Really great all-purpose cleaner. Basically any all-purpose cleaner is great. And then we've got a urethane ball cleaner, which is a great option as well. The problem with these bottles is you are traveling on a plane. Okay. So you can't bring these on your carry-on and you can't put them in your ball bag because they're going to explode. <laughs> right. Okay. So this is where some, some wipes become an option. So option number one would be to bring some wipes. Uh, these also do come in convenient packages, like single service sometimes. This is a canister. Option number two, maybe take this and bring it into like those, those smaller format mm -hmm. containers, yeah. which would be a good option. Or option number three, just buy a bottle on site. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's a good option. Because if ever your ball does get like, let's say a belt mark on it and you need to wipe it off during competition, yeah. you need to have some of that. Okay, or just go to the pro shop and clean it there as well. For sure. Right? So in this case, go see Ernie, he'll help you out. Okay. <laughs> These are all good accessories, but is there anything else that I should be adding just in preparation? Right, definitely. So obviously if you use a thumb, you wanna bring some extra thumb inserts if you're using interchangeables, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, you never know what could happen. Maybe one of the tabs can snap just out of bad luck. Maybe you lose it. Uh, you know, maybe you have a ball bag that doesn't make it to the event, okay? Mm -hmm. So a lot of this stuff is things that you should be traveling with you in your carry-on bags, mm -hmm. okay? So another thing, we spoke about the soles, how important they are, and I've always been uh, a big guy in my uh, pre-shot routine to use the shoe brush, just to make sure that the surface is fresh, okay? Don't put it in your hair, okay? No good, it's gonna hurt quite a bit. Oh. But yeah, just keep your soles fresh, and also, same thing, you never know. You might be walking around, going from pair to pair in between games, mm -hmm. and you step in something, at least you've got the brush there for that. Yeah. Another good thing is to have a stash of inserts with you, okay? I suggest using your typical size, have, have some sizes of those in your bag, but also have at least a half size up, a half size down, and a full size up and a full size down, gotcha. okay? Again, like we were saying, you're going to a different climate, you're going you know, to a different time zone, your body might affect differently to those changes, mm -hmm. at least you have that. And also with this little stash of glue, mm -hmm. okay, the Pro Shop formats that are sold are one ounces, and again, it could leak in your bag, so maybe just those little vials that you could get a Canadian Tire or something just to get you by would be uh, great for that. Mm -hmm. okay. Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire, yeah. <laughs> Sponsored, Jerry. <laughs> Next up, we have thumb tape. Obviously not a case for you, but definitely uh, that. When I used to compete for Team Canada, I used to have a 500-piece roll in my bag, and this would last me quite a bit of time okay so if you're a tape junkie like me they come in 500 pieces 250 pieces and also now 100 pieces Ooh. okay so make sure you check that out and get different widths as well this is one inch you also have three quarter inch and a half inch mm -hmm. okay so make sure you have those and then lastly also we have some other accessories. Maybe you need a tape insert tool, maybe a screwdriver, and also K-tape is now a thing, so kinesiology tape. I don't use these in competition, but I know on the Pro Tour they use them quite a bit, and they're lifesavers. I know the guys at the house, uh, like Chris Prather and all that, they say that it keeps them together, so <laughs> if this is something that you need to use, please do so. Bring a couple of stashes of these mm -hmm. and always keep them handy. So as we see here, we covered a wide variety of this, and like I said earlier, make sure this travels with you. Yeah. Okay, so your backpack with your shoes, you should be able to travel with all this. In your accessory bag going to the event, I want your shoes, maybe a jersey or two, and your accessories. These are harder to replace at an event. Bowling balls are a little bit easier. Maybe also bring your spec sheet with you in case you lose a ball bag and you need to drill some balls on the spot. At least you know what your specs are. Definitely. Okay, with this we cover, you know, a very wide variety. But like I said, maybe these aren't going to be your go-tos on a daily basis, but at least you have them. So Mark, before we wrap this up, do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, when you're at the event, uh, there's a little bit of a rule that I kind of always had in, in my mind was, um, you can only be mad five seconds after a shot, five minutes after a game, and five hours after a block. 
Mm. Okay. After you're done your block, if you're traveling with some friends, maybe recap what went well, what didn't go well, what would you like to improve the next day? And then when you go into the next day, it's a brand new day. What happened yesterday is the past and we move on to the next one, right? And you know, we've seen it all. We've had some players have some bad blocks on day one and then come back, you know, having the day of their lives and, you know, making the team because of that, you know. I myself, when I won the national championships in 2007, the year you were born, no? <laughs> close. I was Pretty close. close. I, was <laughs> I was actually 13th going into the last day oh, wow. and uh, Hail Mary type of a day and uh, went to win on the event uh, that day. So, again, it's not what happened the day before, it's what's happening today. So, stay in the present moment make good shots, and I wish you the best, you know. Thank I'll you. be there, and if ever you want a uh, bird's eye view, let me know. And make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Bufa Bowling, because we will be live streaming the event. Really? Yep. That is great. Yep. And definitely, and on top of that, shop.bufabowling.com. This is Bufa. Use promo code JUNGLEBARKS for 10% off your order. Yeah, great. Good, right? Yeah, good thank stuff. You, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for supporting. Can you put Jimu before Jungle though? Yeah, we could. We can maybe do an extra one, like eleven percent discount. Oh for yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the, the, don't use that coupon. It won't work. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and shout out to all of our members. If you want exclusive content, some coaching, some early access to videos, press the join button below. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I'll thank see you, you at the tourney. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Best of bowling and bowl well at all your events. I wish you all the best.